Hello, I'm Philip Hooker, VP of Strategic Programs at Software AG, who are initiator of the open source ThinEdge.io project. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this, second, this third, fourth, fifth, fifth, fourth uh, ThinEdge.io community meetup. Um, and in particular, as this meetup is particularly special, has actually made, me, um, made my voice go. So what I want to do is actually share with you um, our the team that are in our first uh, hybrid meetup. So you can actually see uh, a great team here. We have a, a number of sort of, uh, team members sort of scattered around different rooms to avoid to avoid echo. So it's a it's a great a great first uh, great first event. So with um, uh, with our sessions today, we're going to go th through uh, what's new in the latest version of um, Thinedge.io, uh, how's that, how it's actually being used and extended and also real implementation examples. But before I begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items for those who are actually uh, joining online. Uh, if you hover your cursor over the main window of the webinar, uh, you'll see the control bar. These allow you to raise your hand if you have a question and also show the meeting chat sidebar uh, if, uh, with participants information. If you'd like to raise a question, Please do that during the session. Uh, you can submit these during the chat, uh, and we'd actually cover any questions that are actually unanswered at the end of each session. Uh, for those that actually raise their hands, we'll actually unmute your mic, uh, so you can actually ask your question directly at the um, relevant interval. Uh, as with uh, the last couple of sessions, we'll actually be raising a number of polls during the meetup. So these are cover important topics um, that are relevant to uh, the topic we just discussed. So to start start this going, uh, what I will do is actually raise our first uh, poll. So the first poll we have is regarding uh, what is your main role in embedded projects. So we're keen to get an idea if you're uh, involved in uh, kind of hardware, software engineering, automation, uh, automation engineer, software, uh, or an IT expert. So please click on that and submit, and we kind of go through the answers a little bit later during the second. Uh, later during the session. So I think a lot of people here seem to be you know, indicating they're um, more on the software development side or project management side, which is which is great. Who So who are we? So who are we in this um, uh, thin edge community? So I'll be introducing the agenda and our first speaker in a couple of minutes, but I'd like to uh, say a few words about who the uh, IoT, the thin edge IO community is. So we're an eclectic group of IoT, uh, OT, and um, uh, IT experts who are enthusiastic about the exploitation of Thinesh.io, the open source cloud agnostic IoT framework designed for resource constrained devices. We're experienced in a range of technologies, including security, connectivity, software management, uh, and particularly software management methods for lightweight devices. During the session, we take uh, Thinesh.io's no nonsense approach to uh, for this interactive technology and actually try to learn learn from our successes and use practical implement implementations to show uh, what we can do. So with that, I'd like to quickly go through our agenda. So we've evolved our approach from the previous meetups to actually focus more on the technology and uh, less on the um, uh, wordy discussion. So we're trying to be very proactive. So we'll kick off uh, this session with a brief re recap of the updates in release 0.7 of Thinesh.io with Andrea Schreiner from the Thinesh.io team. Then we're immediately uh, pivot towards a number of technical sessions from the Thinedge to IoT, covering integrating uh, Code Assist PLCs to the IoT platform, and also exploring uh, future child device support. Then we'll change gears uh, with sort of contributor demonstrations and live implementations covering lo the local uh, management UI and a review of our recent local hackathon. We had planned to cover an OPC UA uh, demo in this session. But unfortunately, the speaker, speaker is actually unavailable due to COVID. So we've postponed that for another session later on. Also, time allowing, uh, we'd like to go through a quick Q&A after each session. So each, each session itself is roughly 20 minutes, and we go through a Q&A towards the end. At the very end, depends on the time we have available, we go through a, a guru bar, so kind of open, open questions if you have any uh, that may be remaining. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Andre Scheiner, uh, Edge Product Manager from the Thin Edge team, who's going to introduce the um, and actually outline the new features and updates to ThinEdge.io 
that are now available in 0 0.7. Andre, over to you. Thank you, Phil. So let me share the screen. Can you see it well? OK, great. So thanks, everyone. And uh, thanks also, Phil. It's great to be here on site. I'm actually in another room. Um, but uh, yeah, what I want to share with you um, today is the updates in the latest release we have made with ThinEdge, but also for the ones that are new to the project, I want to do a quick uh, overview, just one uh, short overview of what ThinEdge is about. So let's start with that. Right. So for the ones that are very new to the project and the community, I want to emphasize basically our main objectives and the vision behind ThinEdge. So with ThinEdge IO, uh, we want to make device enablement easy. And at the same time, uh, we do not want to create any ecosystem or platform blocking. That means that uh, with ThinEdge IO, we create an open and platform agnostic IoT Edge framework designed for um, lightweight or resource constraint devices um, so we can simplify the interoperability between um, the OT, the operational technology and the IT. So in the end, the idea is to make any thin edge device, that's how we classify those type of devices, BLC gateways, protocol gateways, or any type of resource constraint device that you might have in an IoT use case to a deployment option for um, IoT services. And with thin edge, we follow uh, specific, uh, yeah, principles. We follow uh, some some key principles. The first one is the freedom of choice. So we don't want to restrict you on um, things like the, the cloud platform or IT platform that you want to use, uh, but also we want to allow uh, users to write extensions and uh, components in any programming language. Uh, language uh, and therefore we uh, also, for example, leverage uh, MQTT. Um, uh, as an interface for that. Um, in terms of uh, device management, we focus on um, yeah, providing device management features that you might need in every IT use case. So that's really the focus of the project to give you uh, ready to use components for things like software management, firmware and configuration management. And you will see some practical examples uh, around that um, today. And uh, last but not least, uh, another key principle is that we want to be efficient on embedded devices. That means we don't want to introduce any uh, heavyweight components, but really be able to run in a lightweight manner next to other services like PLC runtimes, for example, or so other logic that might be needed on those already very constrained devices, which are in most cases uh, single purpose devices. And within it, we can extend their functionality in an easy way. Um, we're not here alone, right? So ThinEdge is a collaborative project supported by various companies like IFM, Software AG, Kunbos, uh, Ineto, um, uh, and Brainboxes. Um, you have more partners coming up, and uh, we also focus on uh, closely collaborating them and winning new partners and contributors into our community. Now, um, if you want to know a little bit more and go deeper in the vision, why we're doing this, what motivates us, right? What are the key capabilities and the key problems and personas we are addressing with the framework? Uh, just recently, we published the first draft of our vision, uh, both are covering more the high level project side of things, but also we have uh, on GitHub, we have the uh, more the technology vision, so the technical aspects that guide us. Uh, both documents are drafts, so we are really uh, trying to get as much input as possible. So feel free to comment, review that, um, uh, so we can at one point also uh, harden it and, and make it uh, more or less final. Um, now to summarize, I think I talked about that, uh, those key principles, uh, um, and I will not go in there again. Uh, regarding partners, um, we also wanted to mention that we are very happy to welcome another partner in our open source ecosystem, uh, company um, um, Consult Red. Um, so Consult Red is an um, a new ThinEdge partner who provides uh, technology con uh, consulting services 
uh, helping clients to deliver connected devices and systems. So they are really focused on embedded systems, have a broad range of experience with embedded systems and development. We are very happy that they joined the ecosystem and we are looking forward to contributions and, and examples and working together with Consult Red on the Synage IO open source project. Now, um, I talked a little bit about the focus areas, the key functionalities, um, and you can yeah, read all of this on the website and the documentation. But just to summarize uh, the key points and functionalities that are available today. Um, so for the messaging, uh, I already mentioned uh, MQTT uh, interfaces that we offer to plug in different components and to very easily start IoT projects and combine existing software on the device with Synage capabilities. Uh, we have so-called uh, cloud mappers or IoT mappers for um, mostly focusing on Cumulost IoT. We also have an Azure uh, mapper and a preview of an AWS mapper. And we also support uh, device authentication via uh, X509 certificates. And one of the key focus areas for ThinEdge is the device management aspect. So we are offering a monitoring framework based on Collect D. Uh, we offer an extensible software management agent with uh, plugins for different software artifact types. And uh, what we lately added is the configuration management aspect, and that uh, this is what I will talk about uh, later on. We also have examples coming from the community and partners. Uh, so today, for example, you will see uh, one uh, very interesting one, which is the uh, local user interface or management uh, user interface, um, which will come later. Now, what is new in 0, uh, 0 0.7 in the latest release uh, that we have um, uh, published a couple of uh, weeks ago? So first of all, the, the main focus was here the configuration management. So with uh, the configuration management, we are now allowed to configure the device the thin edge device or the device that thin edge is running on uh, remotely um, and you basically can manipulate any type of file based configuration from your iot platform uh, we focused here uh, also uh, on a reference uh, implementation with Comlosti iot um, the other elements that we added is the log file management so you can troubleshoot the device also remotely by analyzing any type of log that the, the device might consume. Uh, we added a daemon health check mechanism and the watchdog support, meaning uh, you can not only monitor the services, so the thin edge components itself, but other, other services and make sure that they are running, but you can, they can also be automatically restarted in case of, of uh, problems. And uh, last but not least, um, uh, another cumulosity specific extension that we added is the support for custom templates, so allowing easy extension of uh, custom logic uh, to Synage, such as, for example, if you want to add custom operations to your device and integrate that with Cumulosity, you can do that as well. And to get all the details around the latest release, um, uh, Hans um, uh, from the Synage team has published a, a new blog uh, on Medium, which you can find uh, if you scroll down on our website. And uh, if you want to get started, we invite you to explore. Uh, so visit our GitHub page, uh, start using ThinEdge, check out our documentation. There you will find the tutorials and most important information how to get started. Uh, so grab your Raspberry Pi and uh, go for it, no matter if you use Azure or Comolosti or any other IT platform, um, that's uh, where you can get started easily. Yeah, that's it from my side. And of course, as always, uh, the call out to uh, reach out to us uh, either on Discord or via email. We are always looking for new partners. We are also looking for feedback on a lot of topics that we will present today. We are always keen to consume the community feedback to derive uh, where we should go next and what uh, capabilities we should focus on. So thanks a lot and back to Phil. Uh, great, Andre. Uh, great, Andre. Excellent. Thank you very much. I, I know um, uh, you uh, you suggested we actually run through a couple of polls. So let, let me let me run those polls now. So uh, if I just share this at the same time. So we're um, we're keen to understand what uh, what challenges uh, companies actually having uh, using 
uh, or what, what challenges they are considering to address using um, Synergy.io. So um, uh, hopefully you can see that that um, poll pop up. If I uh, ask a volunteer to um, press a button on the, the screen here in this room, that'd be great as well. So first one to suggest. Um, so whether that's actually cloud connectivity, OTA software and firmware management, uh, OT protocol in integration or something similar. Um, uh, and the, um, the, the other topic that's particularly um, valuable is actually to, to understand uh, what important features uh, people uh, people are considering or would like to, to have in um, in finished IO. So once again, I'll launch that poll now. So please please put some uh, some uh, your responses and ideas of actually uh, what you what you like. Um, uh, so whatever that may be. So whether it's actually integration to different different protocols, uh, it could be. Um, uh, new services um, or um, potentially even um, uh, kind of uh, some analytics capabilities or something similar like somebody's actually already written. So great, great, it's good, good to see. Um, I think I think we might not have had any specific questions about the the update, Andre, at this point in time. So if I if I move on. Uh, please feel free to raise any questions if you, if you have any. If I, if I move on to our, our next speaker now, if my system is working. So th those of you who are fully aware, Codesys is the um, predominant software suite uh, used in automation um, uh, for well, automation for specialists and in specialist equipment. Um, there's over 400 device manufacturers in different in industry sectors offering intelligent automation services using the Codasys uh, programming interface. So I would like to introduce uh, Christoph Schroeder from our uh, software architect from the Thinedge IO team. He's going to show how Thinedge IO can be used to connect Codasys devices to any IoT platform. So uh, Christoph, uh, over to you. Thanks, Phil, for the introduction. Um, I like also to welcome everybody in that call. And I'm really happy to demonstrate you how easy it is um, to integrate a PLC with uh, the, uh, to to. Can you see my screen? Great. So I'm I'm happy to uh, demonstrate you how how easy it is with the edge to integrate a PLC um, to a cloud platform. So. First, what we will do in that call here in the demonstration, we will look on the um, PLC hardware and PLC software we've used for that demo. Next, uh, we uh, look on the integration itself, how we um, did that and how that works. And finally, um, we uh, look and uh, we, we will uh, see a live demo. Um, before we start with the demo, um, let's have a short catch up how um, what Thinedge does provide to send um, data to a cloud because that's what we want to do with the PLC. So uh, for that, Thinedge uh, use, makes use of the MQ, MQTT broker that runs on the Thinedge device. And um, Thinedge listens on uh, several um, MQTT topics. What we use is the attach measurements topics. Here, Thinedge uh, expects a, a special payload uh, where first an, it's, it's a JSON payload with, with a name and the value. Um, uh, that name is um, the name of the measurement and um, that's the value of the measurement. Um, here's an example. So later that, uh, that that is the name with uh, with which it the measurement will appear in the cloud, and that's a coding value, and you can also add a timestamp. So let's let's have a look to the PLC hardware and PLC software. Um, as PLC hardware, um, we are using a Revolution Pi. It's a um, it's a Raspberry Pi based PLC, and uh, as uh, Phil already mentioned, we as PC software, we use Codesys, um, who is uh, um, besides Siemens, the absolute leader in the automation automation um, industry. Um, 
the re revolution pi um, bases on a, on a raspberry pi the you can, can see the raspberry pi here in the middle and everything around is electronic and mechanic um, that is added um, around the uh, raspberry pi uh, to make it fit for the industry you can see it here in the in the housing um, and with that the raspberry pi is shaped into an industrial grade form factor so with that it complies to electrical mechanical thermal uh, and thermal industrial mm -hmm. requirements and additional with all those uh, various io and field bus modules modules that are also provided it's it's uh, ready for the industrial automation world <clears throat> um, i like to give you also a short overview um, about codices because i expect most um, in the call are not aware of that um, Codesys is a uh, software development environment for PLCs, and it consists of basically of two components. The one is the Codesys workbench that runs on a, um, on a desktop PC, and the second part is a Codesys runtime system, the RTS, that runs on the on the PLC hardware. Um, the Codesys Workbench is used by a PLC automation engineer to uh, create the PLC application. Therefore, he has several editors, text editors and graphical editors to create the application. Um, the Workbench contains also debugs and finally a compiler um, to um, and 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 um, to to send um, to send the application finally to the RTS. Usually, um, a TCP/IP connection is used. And um, then the RTS on the PLC takes care to execute the application and observe the execution of the application. Uh, finally, let's have a sh short look at the structure of a usual PLC application. Um, a PLC application is, is a thing that is executed in a cyclic task. Um, you can see on that figure on the very left side the, the physical uh, hardware inputs and outputs. Um, and on the right side, you can see the, the PLC application flow. Um, what happens in such a PLC cycle at very first is reading the inputs. That means um, a driver on the PLC is triggered that reads all physical inputs uh, and uh, stores them into the RAM in the so-called process image. Next step is the PLC logic is triggered once. The logic logic works on on um, those inputs and um, also on a um, on on an area where where all outputs are stored. And after that trigger, um, the outputs are written. That means again, uh, drivers are triggered that map all these outputs from these from from that process image in in the RAM to these physical outputs. And that process image in the RAM, that is a thing we later use. So let's have a look to the integration. Um, that um, figure shows the components um, that are now on the Revolution Pi. Um, all um, orange parts are co come by default with the Re Revolution Pi. All blue things um, come with thin edge. Um, you can see on the left side here that again the code is this runtime system. On top there is a PLC application. Inside the runtime system there is a, a, the, the process image. <clears throat> and then there is a component uh, um, that is especially exists on the revolution pi, the so-called PI control. And that enables to um, access the process image from inside codices. On the right side you can see thin edge and, and the MQTT broker. And um, so what, what we did, uh, first of all, we have um, built and deployed um, ThinEdge and the MQTT broker um, on the Revolution Pi. And to make um, the glue, um, what was needed is, is that event handler. Um, and um, uh, the important thing is that that PI control cont contains already an MQTT client. And um, that is uh, um, that is uh, called and invoked for for um, when the when data in the process image changes, and um, for each data change, the event handler is called, and that event handler we implemented that especially for for thin edge. That event handler um, gets for for a call the the um, process data item, the, the name, the address, 
and um, and the value and that event handler returns um, a string that mat matches the MQTT payload the net expects just to go some slides back so what the event handler uh, returns is in the end a JSON str string that matches that MQTT payload Yes, and then MQT, the MQTT client takes that JSON string and sends it to the broker. So we can see that better in that um, um, data flow um, chart. On, on the very left side, you can see the process image with some example um, data points. Here, the example data point temperature with the value 25. You can see the PI, PI control that can access the data. Uh, the process image and um, on a change it sends the name and the value to the event handler and the event handler returns the according json string and then um, pi control uses the mqt client mqtt client um, to publish that value in our case here the temperature with the value 25 um, it publishes it to attach measurements and um, the edge takes care to send the send that then to the cloud So let's come to the demo. What we will do now, we uh, create an, um, a small PLC application that um, uh, let, that flashes an, um, an LED on a, uh, that exists on the on the revolution Pi. That's the first step, and in the second step, we want to publish that state of the flashing um, LED to the cloud. So um, what you can see here is the code of this workbench um, with its um, I.O. configuration. That means you can see here all I.O.s um, that are available on that Raspberry Pi, on that, sorry, on that Revolution Pi. And uh, the I.O. we use is that LED I.O. We gave that here a name, GLED. So we can that use in our PLC application. That's again the um, Codosys workbench, but what you can see here now is um, and the, the editor um, for the pro uh, PLC programming language CSC. Um, I have by intention used here a graphical programming language, language just to demonstrate how, how different PLC programming is uh, from usual software development. Um, I don't want to go here too much in details, but um, uh, what you can see here are components which are connected with each other. Other. You can see here a uh, power on delay and power off delay, and um, uh, th that is a variable that gives as input to the both delays the delay time. And um, uh, due cascading uh, uh, those here, um, 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 uh, uh, sig um, th that signal, that output signal uh, toggles uh, um, from one to zero. And that selector routes, um, depending on that input, that that selector unit uh, routes whether that or that signal to the output, um, depending on whether it, this is one and zero. And so in the end, here you can see the output. And in that output, the value zero or four arrives, where um, zero stands for switch the LED off and four stands for switch the LED to green. Um, that's a a short video we, so that we can see that really live in action. First of all, we log in into the PLC. <laughs> now the program is downloaded and we can directly start it. All the program runs and you can see here on the right side the value that toggles uh, in, in the cycle of two seconds between zero and four and that means uh, now the LED is flashing. So next step what we will do is um, to tell the revolution pi that exactly that value should be sent over PI control and the MQTT client to ThinEdge and with that to the cloud. Um, therefore, um, the Re Revolution Pi has has a um, web server installed for several configuration purpose, and um, that web server has an, an, um, 
uh, an area where you can configure, yeah, you can see and configure all um, IOs that are available, a bit similar to what we see, saw before in um, in the codices IO configuration. And on the where here we can see our um, output we want to send to the cloud. And uh, on the very right side for each IO there is an export button and um, Enabling that um, tells um, the MQTT client that it should catch up that value and uh, send to ThinEdge. And that's everything uh, we have to do. And so now we can again um, start the PLC application. Logging into the PLC starting it, we can again see it's, it's flashing inside the workbench. Um, so now let's have a look on the uh, local MQTT bus on the device itself. Here we can see now the messages and the payload. Um, we saw before and here the value reflects um, the value item reflects what goes to the cloud and you can see that matches what we see in, in codices. And let's head, have additionally um, look into the cloud. That's uh, my own Comlosity tenant with my device. That's a revolution pie and that revolution pie published exactly that value to the cloud and we can see that value also reflects what we see on directly on the device on the MQTT bus. So, what did we do and what did we see? We um, uh, we have uh, ThinEdge installed on the Revolution Pi. We have integrated um, with with the Codices application. And we saw there is a minimal, absolutely minimal touch point uh, for the PLC engineer with Finage on the one hand. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the PLC application kept completely untouched. Um, in that context, I want to have a special thanks to, to Revolution Pi, especially to, to Boris. Uh, who did a great job. Uh, he uh, provided on the one hand uh, us with hardware with the Revolution Pi and on the other hand um, he realized with his colleagues uh, that the code is uh, thin edge integration with the, under the Revolution Pi. So a great thanks for that. And with that back to you Phil. Uh, excellent, excellent. Brilliant. So hopefully my uh, my audio is okay now. So uh, Christoph, great, uh, great, great presentation. So we we know um, uh, we know that um, uh, integrating with um, OT assets is particularly important for uh, for customers. Um, so it's kind of good to go through uh, what's happening with Codices. Um, just just before there's actually any questions, or just just to kind of let's inspire some questions. I know. Um, there was a there was a poll that was arranged um, regarding uh, the just to gather people's interest in um, sort of further uh, codices integration examples because I know so previously there was a request to, to be as practical as possible to actually provide as many examples as possible for for different scenarios and as codices is so heavily used in those PLCs industrial um, uh, automation systems there's potentially a a requirement to to go through some more practical practical examples going through. Excellent. So I, I see um, some answers are coming through uh, already. Let me quickly check the chat to see if there's any specific questions about uh, codices. Uh, so no specific questions, but um, uh, uh, Christoph, I think um, uh, everybody's saying there's there's great interest is actually having some more information about codices. So um, you'll be a uh, We'd, we'd be keen to get you back with um, more more information. So uh, so with that, um, so let's let's move on. I think we're uh, about about good on time. So so now 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 to think um, um, where we've 
we, we, we talked about uh, what's happened, the, the new updates for um, uh, Thinedge.io uh, in 0 0.7. So let me try to find my cursor. Uh, we talked about the new updates. We've talked about uh, what's happening with Codices and uh, the uh, OT integration. Um, what I'd like to do is actually slightly uh, pivot it a little uh, and actually share share some of our current thinking regarding some some particularly poignant technical topics. So one, one of these topics is related to um, the way that solution architecture is evolving. So we know that uh, in a number of solution architectures, there's a need to connect uh, multiple devices. So whether you call them leaf devices or char devices, um, and these could be connected and uh, represented in cloud platforms as either those specific, um, just as specific measurements or actually full encompassing kind of objects like um, um, child devices. So um, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Albin Suresh, uh, lead software engineer from the Thinedge.io team, who's going to share uh, our current thinking uh, in the Thinedge.io team regarding this uh, child device topic. Um, so uh, Albin, uh, over to you. All right, back to the presentation. So yeah, as I was saying, like yeah, so the, in this session, uh, we'll be talking about a feature that we are planning to build in uh, in our upcoming releases. So, uh, so it's not something that we've already built. So the motive, the whole uh, motivation to do a presentation like this is to share the use cases that we are trying to solve with this uh, child devices support in thin edge okay so we have already identified some use cases uh, from some of uh, from the community so we'll be sharing that with you and we would like to validate our understanding those use cases and the requirements that has come out of it and most importantly it is to get feedback on any additional use cases that you might have with child devices that we haven't quite covered uh, yet Okay, so with that, let's let's start. So, so before uh, <clears throat> before developing into what we have, what we are planning to build uh, in future, so let's review as to what we have today. So so far with Thinedge, our focus has been on getting your devices connected, right? So you can have a uh, you you'd have a, a device, a gateway kind of a device where you can attach your sensors or actuators. And the purpose was to get these connect devices, which otherwise couldn't have been connected to the cloud directly. So get these devices connected with the help of this gateway and get the data from these sensors to the cloud or control these actuators and stuff from the cloud. Okay, so this has been our focus. So we've added se several features to Thinedge, uh, like yeah, to send measurements, even salams or uh, control the devices via custom operations like configuration management, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But recently we've come across some far more complex uh, deployments in the field where it's not just simple sensors or actuators that are connected to this gateway, but more complex devices like the PLCs where uh, like <clears throat> or multiple PLCs where far many, many, many more devices are connected. So this in the field, it's a very complex uh, device deployment. And with Thinedge so far, we just had like every sensor that is connected to the Thinedge device or every actuator that's connected to the Thinedge device. Finally, when you uh, visualize it from the cloud, there is only, you'll only see one device in the cloud. Okay, And all the sensor data is associated to that device in the cloud, which we typically call device twin. And every control that you try to do goes from that single device twin. But when your field the, when your device deployment in the field is so complex, that single device uh, associating all the device from all these sensors, all these devices into a single device uh, wouldn't be sufficient. So you would want to visualize the same uh, deployment hierarchy from the cloud as well. So when you are controlling, say for example, this PLC, you would want to see that PLC as an independent device and associate all the data <clears throat> for it uh, with that specific PLC and not associated with the gateway device itself. Okay, so this has been one of the uh, requirements or uh, use cases that we are trying to solve. And another one is there are smart devices. So these smart devices are capable of connecting directly to the cloud. So they they have libraries, let's say MQTT libraries or HTTP libraries that they can use to connect to the cloud directly, but they prefer not to. Uh, because <clears throat> uh, 
one of the reasons is security. Okay, so even with these smart devices, many many of these uh, customers or interested parties they don't want to expose all their smart devices to the internet directly. Uh, that's a they consider that as a security uh, risk. Okay, so rather they would like to connect that to a single gateway, a thin edge gateway, which is secure, right? And only that secure gateway is connected to the cloud. So that way, yeah, that attack surface is very much limited. So, uh, and you can make sure that your gateway is fully hardened, and uh, yeah, there are no intrusions possible. Okay, so this is one of the uh, one of the use cases that security concern. The other one is that even though like the smart devices, they wouldn't want to send all the data, all the data that's generated by these smart devices to the cloud. So they they want to reduce the volume of data that is pushed to the cloud. So what they want to do is uh, they want to push the data to the gateway device and do some filtering or aggregation or some additional data processing uh, at the gateway with all the volume that is coming or data that is coming from these devices and only send that filtered like special or filtered or processed data to the cloud. So you can completely reduce the amount of uh, data that is being sent to the cloud. So only the relevant data gets pushed to the cloud. So this is the other uh, requirement or uh, use case that we have come across. OK, so to solve these use cases, we are introducing this concept of child devices in thin edge. OK, so what exactly is a child device? So a child device is a logical representation of a device in the cloud that has its own identity. So it's different from the thin edge device itself, the uh, the gateway device itself, but it is still linked to the gateway device as a child or as a leaf or whatever, like based on which cloud that you're connected to. Okay, so it needs its own identity, but it should still be linked to the gateway. So that better re uh, represents the deployment that you have in the field as well. Okay, now these child devices. They can be a real physical devices that are directly connected to the gateway, or they can even be logical devices or just a simple process or container that is running on the gateway. So, for example, uh, in this case, in the case of this, uh, with say uh, some field with field bus device like uh, devices connected uh, via some field bus protocols or uh, PLCs, uh, they can't directly push their data to the gateway. Right, so you need something running on the gateway, some process running on the gateway that is reading the data from these sensors over that field bus channels or IU links or whatever, like uh, the demo that you just uh, see with PLCs. So this is the logical child device use case. Okay, so child device can be of these two types. And what do you need with a child device? So they have, they need their own identity as mentioned earlier, and their own metadata. OK, so it's not just the identity. They, they'll have their own metadata like uh, uh, the device type, the manufacturer info, the serial number, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they'll have their own settings that is different from the gateway device. So settings that defines the current state of the device, like set points, the configurations that are available on the device, or all the software that's installed on those devices, et cetera. And these devices obviously can send data, so either telemetry data or the data that represents uh, state changes or current state. And they can also receive commands from the cloud to change the behavior of these devices, say in the case of actuators. Okay, so this is what we want with child device. So basically, pretty much everything that this gateway, the thin edge gateway devices itself uh, has, but with dedicated, with their own dedicated uh, independent identity. Thin edge, as the thin edge platform, what do we want to provide? What are features do we need to provide for child devices to enable them? Okay. So the first thing is we need to provide the secure association of a physical child device on the field to its cloud device twin, so that, that logical representation in the cloud. Okay. So any data coming from the physical device should be associated to its twin, the, its logical twin in the cloud. Okay. So that's the the primary requirement. And uh, so when thin edge is acting like a gateway, there will be multiple child devices, not just a single child device that would be connected. Multiple child devices would be connected to <clears throat> connected to this gateway. So in such cases, in that case, 
routing of all the data. So all these child devices would be pushing data and uh, then it needs to make sure that all the data is routed to their corresponding appropriate device twins in the cloud. Okay. And similarly uh, for the commands received from the cloud, to the devices as well. Again, the routing of these commands from the cloud to the device is also uh, another core requirement. Now, the next major thing is uh, hosting, uh, as we saw in the second use case, uh, hosting additional filtering or aggregation uh, or processing logic on the gateway itself. Okay, so ThinEdge itself wouldn't be doing any filtering or aggregation on its own, but it needs to support or it needs to host additional logic that you can write, uh, which will process the data that is coming, the raw data that is coming from these devices, and uh, and then you yeah, do any filtering, aggregation, etc. before they are sent out to the connected cloud. Okay. And then the the most important thing as a gateway, so guarantee the message delivery, be it uh, telemetry data data or commands received from the, from the cloud. So make sure that th the data is not lost or they are delivered uh, even in the case of network disruption. So for example, if the device, if the gateway is not connected to the cloud briefly uh, due to some network outage, that shouldn't stop the child devices from functioning. So they will continue functioning. They will continue sending all the data, uh, generating all the data. So then it should still continue working. All the aggregation logic that's uh, installed on ThinEdge should continue running. It it would end up, it will create more uh, missions or events or alarms like any data. So then it should probably keep it cached or queued until the network disruption is uh, fixed. So as soon as the network is re restored, all this data uh, that was collected or queued during that disruption period should be delivered to the cloud or vice versa, the commands from the cloud to the devices. Okay, so basically be re resilient to network di disruptions. So these are the uh, key uh, guarantees that ThinEdge as a platform would have to provide to child devices, or these are the things that we are currently considering. Okay, so what are the next steps? So the next step is you have already uh, heard about the uh, use cases that we are considering th that we are trying to solve so we would like to hear more uh, hear hear from you about more additional any additional use cases that we may not have considered or that probably won't be covered with what we have the conceptual requirements that we have already uh, mentioned okay so we would like your feedback on this feature before we uh, before we build it okay and how can you uh, give this feedback obviously the, so during this meetup, so uh, in this meetup itself, you can directly share it either after this presentation or uh, in a, uh, at the end of this uh, session during the uh, networking uh, networking time, or you can also reach out to us via our online channel. So we have our Discord channel, which is uh, mentioned in our uh, GitHub open source project page. Okay, so you can uh, just join our uh, server and. Feel uh, feel free to share your uh, share your feedback there. So we have a dedicated channel created for use cases named use cases. So feel free to share your feedback there, or even use GitHub discussions. So we've already have we already have a few discussions around this uh, child devices feature. Okay, so feel free to either add your comments there or even create new discussions for something that's not covered here that that I mentioned. Okay. So with that, so yeah, we've reached the end of the session. So thank you so much for listening. So we have already started working on this feature. So uh, and uh, there will be uh, we already had support for measurements for child devices uh, since uh, I think version 0 0.5, if I remember correctly. So you could send measurements from any child devices to ThinEdge and uh, get it sent to a, uh, to a connect, connected cloud. So that feature already existed and we are adding more support for data like uh, events and alarms in our upcoming release and uh, adding to so planning to add more support for additional commands from the cloud to the devices as well. So this will be coming in the very uh, uh, like uh, 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 immediate releases. So please don't hesitate your, to share your feedback as quickly as possible. So with that, thanks everyone for listening. So awaiting your feedback.
in our Discord channels or GitHub discussions. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Robin. Uh, let me um, just quickly share. Really share our slide again. So as as always, we're um, uh, we're keen to, keen to get your feedback. Um, as a as a precursor to that, um, we uh, oh, obviously the um, the the concept and the scope that Albin's actually presented is actually related to all the conversations with customers, uh, customers and partners and enterprises we've actually had. So throughout uh, all of the uh, contributing partners. Um, so what we are keen to do is actually um, to have an understanding if you are uh, interested in uh, child device or leaf device uh, support. So I just launch a, another poll now to actually uh, assess your interest. Uh, and once again, for the for the team in the room, can I have a volunteer who's actually going to sort of press the bus on this huge screen next to me? Um, so just get an idea of actually the, the level of the level of support you actually have with the um, uh, with with those those services. Um, the um, and the the second thing is we we know uh, what we we know from the conversations I had previously. There's a desire to have more practical understanding about the usage, so kind of use cases and it's an update. So if if you if you have had um, uh, some uh, requirements to um, uh, to to fulfill or deliver or deploy a uh, uh, child device uh, use case or leaf device use case, please, please be keen keen to uh, hear from you if you'd like to actually present that at a future meetup. So I know there's kind of great interest in the um, in the community. So let me quickly check to see if there's um, any other uh, chats here or any other chats, any questions from the room. Maybe I, I realize I haven't gone to the room recently. So any any questions in the room from our uh, our army? of uh, thin edge t-shirted evangelist uh, so not 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 right now that's good so um we've um kind of covered a, kind of two great topics from the thin edge to team's perspective so what i'd like to do now is actually kind of slightly pivot to actually consider um what are our uh, contributing partners uh, doing so um for one for one of those um we know that. Um, uh, uh, so let me quickly click here. So we, um, with ThinEdge.io overall, we're trying to actually make it easy to connect uh, connected devices, make that connectivity easy. What we realize though is there's some small periods of time in which I make them super small uh, where that connectivity doesn't really help. So the use of a kind of local management interface actually really does help to actually ensure uh, either like kind of troubleshooting or updates or uh, scenarios where it's actually unconnected and all just kind of maybe that initial or um, uh, kind of fault finding for sort of um, uh, thin edge die over, overall. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Christoph Strack, a solution architect from Software AG, who will show you how thin edge .io or the thin edge .io, um, management uh, user interface plugin actually works and how it aids local configuration. So with that, Christoph, I will hand over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to um, to introduce uh, this inter very interesting use case. So uh, what you can expect from the next few minutes is that I will introduce you to the um, possibility to set up the um, thin edge uh, locally through uh, through a UI. <clears throat> so we we learned that uh, most of the time it's already provisioned and uh, automatically uh, set up. But very often, for example, in in, in troubleshooting uh, sessions or in, in if you want to to do a retrofit, there is a there is a need to. Um, to to do a setup locally and then it's very important uh, that that you have an um, a possibility to do it uh, through a ui because <clears throat> you see it you see it here you are <clears throat> in a um 
if you are a field technician, for example, so this started um, together with a with uh, one of our customers, together with, with a partner for uh, a manufacturer for industry industrial automation. So a field technician who wants to provision to set up a connect um, um, a wind turbine to uh, to the uh, to its digital twin in, in the cloud um, starts uh, locally and and these technical field technicians they are not so IT savvy so they are not used to and don't want to work um, on um, on command line tools so they they prefer um, uh, a UI a web UI and this shields from all the complexity it's not as error prone and it uh, gives you more uh, security. So what I will uh, show you um, a, a, a play of, of, of a field technician who is in, in the process of setting up um, their, um, their local thin edge through a management UI, which you can see here. And at the same time, we want to see um, how it's represented um, in, in the cloud um, to see its, its digital twin. So what you see here is uh, the, um, the device management on, of Cumulosity um, IoT. Besides, it, it offers a lot of other capabilities. What we concentrate on for the moment is the device management. So um, the aspects of, of uh, registering a, a device and see the process data as it, as it comes in. Okay. So let's get back to um, to being now. I'm in the role of a field technician, which you s is very, very well seen here on um, it was this orange um, uh, um, color. You see it here. I'm I'm on on local host. I'm so I'm connected locally, um, connecting a, um, um, the um, gateway from a wind turbine to my my cloud. So next thing is I <clears throat> I want to, to to set it up and it uses um, 509 certificates. So the first step is um, people that have gone through the command line setup are familiar with this. So I uh, I enter here the required information. For example, um, here I give the device um, a name and tell uh, uh, say what is what is the cloud tenant and <clears throat> now i'm already um, um, it's, it's possible to to do the first step the first step is that i generate the device which you can see here and it's um, um, it's it's the first step and you can you can follow you can follow the the different steps here on the on the on the command line and now um, the next step is to connect it to your cloud tenant. There are two options. You can either download the certificate and upload it through um, through the management UI here in Cumulosity. Or what I will demonstrate to you in the next step is there's a little bit more. Uh, it, it, it's easier if you do it here. So I connect it. Um, through um, I give the uh, required um, credentials here and now I can start uploading um, uploading the certificate you have seen it was um, um, it was successful and <clears throat> now what happened in in the background so now I'm switching roles um, I'm the um, the central um, operator and see what are the uh, the relevant um, uh, devices that are about to register okay here is my my device and it was um, it has um, registered or it, it prepared to register with an uh, with, with a certificate that will expire next year sometime but you can see that it uh, from three minutes past five that it was just created right now so the next step is um, I'm I'm ready now uh, to control the um, thin edge device through this um, step. And here I have the, the next next part. I can control it and I start with the edge. And 
in the background, what happens is that the bridge is is uh, created. Mosquito as a local um, as a local uh, MQTT broker is 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 started, and a few other the mapper is is started, and this was um, um, then. Um, uh, seen so it, it it's a, it's uh, successful so what we <clears throat> what we have done in the meantime is so we only started this here locally and um, we can follow you can follow what is uh, was what is happening locally by looking at um, at this status um, UI so let's see uh, if we have done everything correctly so where is my my agent my agent is started my touch mapper is started so i connected to comolosity which you can see here and these are um this is the mapper to uh, provide some data to us as well as collect d so let's see what uh, what happened so the 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 bridge and the mapper was were started so something should have happened in the cloud so now I switch over to the central instance, to my local instance, and refresh here and see how how my system behaves. And you can see um, it's five minutes past uh, five, and our new device has registered. And we see that um, that um, already some some measurements are. Um, already sent sent across to to the cloud and <clears throat> what might be another use case is that you that you control the configuration or that you can that that you request logs before this is possible i have to go back here to the to the local uh, instance and restart uh, the plugins so my plugins for for enabling interaction for configuration management and log requests uh, have been started um, and you can follow uh, this here nicely um, so everything works fine so now i can i can go back here to the central instance <laughs> now my central operator he wants to check on some uh, configuration so it needs some some time Oops. So here we go, and we can we can see um, <clears throat> what is available uh, down here, um, and as well the next step is you can you can request for example a log file, see what is what is happening in for example in the log, and this takes a, a short time and then you can you can see that everything is done correctly and the initialization um, of the, the plugin was was done correctly um, one aspect is that you can see visualize the the uh, measurements as they come in 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 the cloud but in the meantime so for for example one use case that we learned from this um, uh, this business case that I mentioned earlier was um, there. there is a period when the local gateway is not connected to the cloud, but the actors and sensors are already connected and you might have an interest to see what is what is happening. Um, and that is that is possible here <clears throat> through this uh, second part. So where you uh, where you can take a look at um, at your uh, at your measurements as they as they come in. So these are um, so it takes a short while until this initializes. Uh, I can no, this is not behaving as as expected. Let's take a short look. So everything is started. So I reload everything. No, okay. What I will do is I will 
stop, give it a second chance, I stop the edge. Stop the edge and start it again. And see if, if this helps. While this is um, in process, maybe I can I can uh, switch over to um, the documentation because it's everything is um, is documented and pushed in a in a in a GitHub project. So we see. Um, so what I what I expected was to see here. So here. Um, you can see how how this should should uh, look like. So here um, you have two options. Either in real time you you can see the measurements as they come in in real time, or you can um, you can uh, see the the measurements in a in a uh, historic. So so go back for a certain amount of time, for um, for ten minutes, for an hour, or or for even for for a longer time. Because as part of the solution, I scroll up now to the very beginning, so we see a little bit about the architecture, what is um, what this Docker solution looks uh, looks like. So it's a combination of uh, the search. Um, so one one container contains the core process of the Syn, Syn Edge UI, and uh, what was added was a node server node.js server that hosts the web application that you that you have just uh, that you have just seen and <clears throat> the additional components is eventually we wanted to to uh, um, see the, the the measurements locally so for this we added um, um, a, a storage mongodb in this case and to to link it to uh, the set UI, there's an additional uh, container that uh, only that listens to uh, to the that measurements from 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 Mosquito and sends it off to the MongoDB. And in in the MongoDB, uh, they can rest for a certain time. Um, if you um, if you download and, and build the solution, um, it's currently the time to live is set. To, to 30 minutes and then they are um, deleted automatically but this can be changed and um, once you 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 click on this administration dashboard uh, sorry on this analytics dashboard then um, the, the the measurements are are then um, queried from the mongodb and then streamed here to, to the node.js to be uh, to be shown in the analytics dashboard so um, this shows the most important uh, uh, the three um, important um, components as, as you see and down here you see um, um, what is required once you um, once you clone the repository um, you you build it and and then set it up you have to configure your docker docker host which is a requirement if you want to to run it on a, uh, for example, um, on a on a gateway, uh, a Docker host has to be re uh, represented uh, or exist, and the memory has to be uh, larger than than two gigabyte. Okay, so let's give it a second chance and see what happens. Uh, no, it's not behaving as I expect. I try to too often. But it was um, it, it, it's working uh, very well, so I will uh, later check on what what happened here in, in, in the meantime. And there's another section uh, here. You can um, add your, uh, your your cloud credentials and see check from the local device if the registration was successful in, in this case. OK, that is what I wanted to show and uh, present to you. Um, so I'm happy to to listen to your questions. Thank you very much for your attention.
Uh, excellent. Thanks, Christoph. So let me. Um, excellent. So I'm just going to uh, mute my AV setup here with a di different screens and uh, different things. So um, uh, great, uh, uh, great presentation, Christoph. And it, it, it really shows that um, uh, so finished IO is easy to extend with uh, to deliver the capabilities that are required. So uh, providing a, a plugin uh, that's not just delivering um, uh, the, the, the needs to configure the device locally, but also making that uh, well, open source and also extendable and rebrandable by um, uh, by different customers for different uh, different circumstances. So I know um, so whilst people are thinking about questions, if uh, if there are any questions, I know we had a, a couple of a couple of polls um, uh, regarding the management UI. So I just uh, launched the uh, the first one now that goes through um, uh, what uh, additional capabilities people would like to add to that UI. So whether that be uh, kind of streaming or visual analytics or other uh, other capabilities and services. Um, so um let me just uh, see see how that's see how that's going um and as the polls can be uh, can be stacked up um uh so christoph raised a question regarding um the um the database infrastructure that the people uh, may may want to use on this so uh, obviously the um uh, the the, the prototype that sort of Christoph and the team have actually developed uh, within Software AG is kind of related to MongoDB, but there may be maybe alternatives that are um, uh, keen for people to to use. And from a, uh, a finished IO partner side, um, the, the the team may want to kind of make um, make the open source component flexible. So um, please indicate uh, what uh, what um, uh, uh, database infrastructure you consider useful for this um, uh, management UI. And then lastly, uh, so last poll um, for the management UI, um, just just a general interest. So there's um, uh, the the aim is to uh, not, I think, so as Christoph said, the aim is not to kind of build out this kind of complete uh, kind of an industrial HMI uh, in an open source area, but actually provide the key functionality. So part of that's actually trying to work out um, how much data would be required to be stored. So um, if so, the last poll is trying to give an indication of or trying to get an indication of um, what the frequency of the data may be uh, that you want to actually store or uh, kind of visualize locally. Obviously, the majority of the data would be um, uh, processed to some degree and actually pushed to the cloud, but please indicate uh, the type of frequency you would actually like to um, uh, store locally that could be um, uh, better better interpreted. So um, I go through there. So I think we're seeing um, a little, so uh, on the last one, so significant interest in either a single day or kind of a, a week, a week of data being stored. Uh, let me check to see if there's been any questions specific questions to Christoph. Um, or is, is there a question question for the room? So let me um, uh, let me open the mic to the room. Just one second here. Yeah, great presentation, Christoph. So one quick question. What kind of footprint does your application have and what kind of devices, you know, what kind of device resource it would need to and be enabled on? So do you have a, is it open for any very low footprint devices or uh, it does need quite a lot of um, megabytes to run? So um, it's it's currently I, I tested this on um, on Linux and on 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 macOS running a, a, do, a Docker, and uh, the images are are rather rather small. So if you, if you build them, say are uh, a hundred uh, 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 megabyte or one hundred thirty five megabyte. So they are not that uh, that big. Um, so if you if you want to extend it to um, 
and to Raspberry. So there is there's the idea either to to use to virtualize it on on Raspberry for on a, on a limited device or to um, to install it uh, to install it natively. So um, it does not consume so much uh, memory. So it's um, only 20 or 30 uh, megabyte. So it should be possible to to even run it on um, on Raspberry. And I um, when I checked on the on the raw resources that uh, that were consumed by these by the three different containers. So you remember there's there's the MongoDB, there's the uh, um, the Tetch, or Thin Edge by itself, and then there is so this connecting. And and actually um, the the most resources were consumed by the uh, by the MongoDB con container. So it really depends what type of um, of storage you uh, you install. So I would expect that this has uh, is the most uh, time cons uh, resource consuming. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Great, great. Uh, brilliant. So hopefully my my AV is um back back and working now. So uh, so thank thanks again, Christoph. So uh, great uh, great presentation. So let me quickly um, uh, come back in. Great. Um, so we've. We've got gone through gone through some great presentations. So um, in the in the meetup invite, um, you're you're aware we were uh, kind of focused on doing a kind of hackathon of, uh, and um, our um, let's say not so um, uh, uh, not so subtle title was actually doing a not so remote monitoring uh, for, uh, for for beer uh, beer beer pump or beer distribution. So we ran that um, a very quick hackathon yesterday. Uh, and what we'd like to do now is actually briefly share uh, with you a summary of what we did, so kind of the technology and the kind of use case. So uh, without further ado, as you'd say in England, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Boris Kuspanjic and also uh, from, from Cumbus, and also reintroduce Andre, who are going to walk you through uh, what our challenge was and also what we did uh, with and the amazing results we got from our hackathon. So. With that, uh, if I hand over to um, you straight away, just one second. So, hi everyone. Uh, Boris, are you there? We cannot see your camera. Can you hear? Now we can hear you. Okay, so what we wanted to um, present, yeah, um, I think we, while preparing the um, the meetup here, um, we had a slight problem, and the problem is that Boris uh, catched a little bit of COVID, and therefore we have a real remote uh, use case uh, that we can talk about, and. Um, um, yeah, Boris, uh, I think you sit in Hamburg, right? We are here in Düsseldorf, and we were thinking about how can we enjoy uh, this meetup situation together in the best way. And therefore, what uh, Boris has done is he prepared a, a um, uh, how should we call it, a smart um, connected beer keg. And Boris, maybe you can show the the setup with us uh, share the setup and explain a little bit what you have done uh in hamburg and then i can explain what we have done here and what problem we wanted to solve so as you can see um i have a little bit uh i i interfered a little bit too much with our beer showcase so um, this might be reflected in some of my slides and uh, yeah we first had to do a plan and uh, you know IT guys they 
try to plan in a real good way. So uh, the plan was we take Cumulosity IoT. And then we need a smartphone with an app and um, like a sensor, but um, you will hear a bit more uh, about that from the team in the room because that is not on my side. This smartphone is in the room. On my side, there is a revolution pie, of course, and we wanted to connect it via thin edge. And the second thing we did is we created um, a connection to an actor and to a beer keg. And of course, it should push. So for now, we have a good plan. What should it do? When it's pushed, of course, um, I want to have a beer and I want to be very happy. And in this case, we want to send some data back to the Cumulosity IoT via Thin Edge. And this is pretty much the test setup that I have here. And I will now try to switch the video so you can see it live. And then um, I will mute myself again. And you, Andre, you can take the mic again. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, what did we want to do? I think, Boris, you explained the setup perfectly. So, what we have done on our side, uh, with the help of Thinedge, we have established a connection um, to an IoT platform, in this case, Cumulosity. And um, let me just share and show you how that looks like. So, first of all, um, we connected uh, Boris Revolution Pi that is attached to the beer keg uh, to Cumulosity IoT. And if you go to the device management section um, and click on all devices, you will see. So this is Boris device. And um, you also see that it's located somewhere in Hamburg. So this is Boris address. So hopefully <laughs> no one will visit him. Um, and on our side, what we have done is uh, we have uh, we have a so-called um, mobile app, Cumulosity mobile app, that uh, we can easily connect to any Cumulosity tenant. And for the sake of uh, drinking beer together, we attach it to a, some alcohol-free uh, beer bottle. And what we want to achieve is every time we drink or pour some beer from this bottle, Boris gets some beer as well. So now let's look at the setup again. Let's continue with uh, what we have done for that. So um, you can see if you go to the devices, you can see uh, my phone, my iPhone connected to uh, Cumulosity. And if you go on the measurement tab, you can see that there are different um, uh, data points, different sensors that are attached to the phone. So we know that phones these days are very smart and have different types of sensors. So we decided to use the acceleration sensors uh, that we have on the phone to um, yeah, evaluate or to, to analyze the position of the phone. And during a tilt, um, uh, we will uh, basically uh, control the view keg on Boris' side. How did we do that? Um, we, for that, we used our self-service analytics builder. And as inputs, we use the um, acceleration sensors. We needed two uh, sensor values, the x-axis and the y-axis. And if they reach certain thresholds, so this is what we have checked by looking, for example, at the uh, cockpit application on the phone. So you see, this is my phone. And if I tilt it, you see the widget is moving, right? So this is the uh, controlled by the acceleration sensors and the gyroscope, right? And we use that information to really um, um, trigger an operation on the Synage side. So this operation is sent from Cumulosity to the Revolution Pi consumed by Synage and translated into uh, the actor movement of the view cam. So this is what the analytics rule that we have created in roughly five minutes uh, does, right? So we uh, look, uh, uh, we have created two threshold rules and um, we trigger the so-called beer operation, which we have created to pour uh, the beer. And we also count how many beers 
or is already consumed. And now to summarize all of this, we have created a simplistic, very simplistic dashboard where you can really monitor how many beers we already poured. So we are at 19 Boris. Um, I think furthermore, Boris also attached the temperature sensor to the keg. So you can see we're at 18 degrees. So I think still acceptable. And you can also see the um, acceleration sensor movements in the widget on the right side. So now the magic test, I hope I will do it to the right, uh, the right way. So Boris, are you ready? Okay, Boris is ready. I hope you can see. Well, let, let's try first like that. Okay. It was working in the demo before. Why is it? Yeah, now there it's we go. Woo. Okay, just to prove. Wait, wait, wait. It's Another it's one for me. Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, yeah, now cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, Boris. <laughs> also, let me show you, Boris. You need another one? Yeah, absolutely. So we're counting. We we have to uh we have to just modify uh the the amount of beer that comes out of it. I'm not, <laughs> um, this this is not working out for me. I'm I'm not buying Thin Edge when when it's just this <laughs> this uh, much of beer. Yeah. Okay. So this is it from our and side. I want to share some some last thing. Of course. This is why we are celebrating? Because. We did this. <laughs> this is something we are celebrating. <laughs> this. And uh, this is why we wanted to do the beer showcase in Dusseldorf. So cheers to everybody. We are so happy to have the certificate now. We've gone we've gone through uh, uh, gone through a lot uh, in a um, uh, slightly extended, but kind of um, uh, still kind of compact uh, period of time. Um, so now we're we're keen to move on to just just if there's actually any open questions i know first hybrid events we have like a local team here uh we're kind of fully kitted out on the um uh, thin edged iot shirts uh we have a number of so a number of people online uh we we know there's a large community actually use these videos um after we've actually uh, delivered them on our youtube channel so if there are any, any questions now please feel free to raise those or reach out to any of the team on the, the discord channels or through meetup or um, through alternatives. So whilst people actually think about if there are any questions, uh, as always, we're keen to learn from what you want from these community uh, meetups. So we know we can deliver the um, uh, release demos also. So this is a kind of a, a way to get kind of more interaction into uh, into the community to actually see how you want to how you want to leverage it. So with that, uh, oh. With that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of our uh, presenters and demonstrators and also kind of people online and offline and actually in the meeting. Um, as always, um, just to make you aware that uh, a lot of the Finnish IO contributing partners are also recruited in this space. So if you think this is a, an area you'd like to get involved in, so in better systems, connectivity, IOT, so please feel free to uh, get in touch with any one of the members I've actually kind of mentioned here to, uh, to give us a call. And uh, then lastly, I'd like to uh, wish you uh, wish you well. Actually, ask you to stay safe. So, especially uh, with, with with Boris, actually Boris in quarantine. So, stay safe, keep well, and we look forward to seeing you in the next meetup, which is likely to be in the September period. And have a great summer, and see you soon. Thank you.